Thank you very much, Sean. We do hope you stay safe and continue keeping us updated. Okay, so you were talking about litigations. He's mentioned some things there, but we'll come to that. Yeah. But you said this is the first time that we've not had any litigation yeah, since after the, a primary election. Yeah, since the return of democracy in 1999. Why do you think that's so? Um, first of all, I think, um, you know, for me, um, leadership is about casting a vision. Now, when you cast a vision, when you know where you're going to, um, and you sell this idea to the people. Now, when I mean, it's not a do or die affair. If um, I mean, surprisingly, I mean, if you look at the number of contestants, they had about 37 gubernatorial aspirants. I mean, for Anambra State alone, um, I mean, the largest so far, you know. But um, I think uh, one of them, they, they wanted to move forward. You know, I'm sure parties realize that by the time they start going to court, um, and then there's a lot of litigation on um, the primaries, they will lose a lot of ground. So I think that um, necessitated the fact that they came together, rise around themselves, and said, okay, no, no, let's just resolve this thing within the party machinery of, you know, conflict resolution, rather than taking it to court. And then that helped quite a lot. And then, you know, compromises, then settlements and so then movement to other parties as well. As well. <laughs> so <laughs> Mr. Benite, um, the Sean mentioned a couple of things on ground, some of the things that have happened. He talked to let's look at the issue of logistics. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a perennial situation. I mean the the INA Commissioner talked about how last yesterday mm -hmm. things were topsy turvy yeah. but they are now normalized. But and the card readers failed today and he said they've been replaced. Uh, ad hoc staff could not find their, their postings, mm -hmm. and then there was a mix up in the postings. These are the same issues that we've heard about in previous elections. What's your Well, uh, leadership is about taking ownership. There is an absence of taking ownership of these things. Now, well, once there's lacking an excellence in doing the little things which aggregate to produce the big thing, the big thing becomes a mess because those little things are what produces the big thing. So you bring in copper from out of state, but you're not prepared for them. Who, whose responsibility was it to get them in and you know, spread them as they're supposed to be. They are supposed to be. You know, there is this absence of taking of ownership of the activity that we're given, you know, responsibility over. Now, we think that a position of authority confers on us some power. Yes, it does. But the greater thing it confers on us is responsibility, which a lot of us don't seem to realize. Responsibility and, I mean, dictates that you take ownership because it's your name that's going to be tied to the success or the failure. So INEC continues to make the same mistake because there's a lack of training. Once there is leadership doesn't realize the importance of training, then everything fails because I am left to operate at my own wings, how I feel it should be best done. No, it can never, you, you can never produce anything credible if you do not have trained people. You can't move in coppers overnight and expect them to do anything credible. No, at the first sign of trouble, they're going to run for their lives because they're not trained. But when you train people, and that's what leadership is all about. Anybody who says he's a leader and doesn't consider training as a very important tool. I'm sorry. And this is INEX bogeyman. No training. Ad hoc staff. All these years, you have people that you can rely on because you have trained them. When you blow a whistle, they are ready to turn up and produce for you. But you, you, you forget that this ad hoc staff, every other um, six or two, eight cycle. months, every other six to eight months, they are changed. So they train these sets, they go, another set comes in the following. 
I, I, I agree. But you see, you have a core team. Every enterprise must have a core team. But do you think INEC is sufficiently staffed? Now, he said the leader casts a vision. Now, who heads the Electoral Commission in Britain, for instance? How long has it been there? Is he rotated and, you know, to satisfy political, you know, uh, uh, dividends and all of all that stuff? No. These people, they run it as their responsibility. The man has been there for the last 25 years. He has learned on the job. He has produced, so he can produce a manual to run an effective election. The, 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 the new INEC chairman, how long has he been on the job? How many elections has he? Uh, Jagar did one election and he's gone. The new man comes and takes Jagar's blueprint and chunks it and produces his own. No society can ever grow without reliable documentation that we build on. Build on. So when you rotate you know, ad hoc staff, it is because you don't have a core. I, I must have a core that they can deploy to any state and within three weeks can produce a team that will do an excellent job. They don't have that Okay, um, it might be too early to start, you know, saying, okay, this is how this, all of these um, logistics issues will affect this election. But this election day was not um, announced last week. It's been known for, for a long time. And so why do you think we still have this kind of issues? You find card readers not working, uh, electoral officers not at the polling units, you know? How is it going to affect this election in any way? And how can we also guard against this in subsequent elections? Well, uh, I think uh, it's not yet here or there for now. Uh, I don't want to, to, to conclude, to jump to any conclusion yet. Uh, where you use technology, technologies, anything can happen. Even people who produce it will warn you that <laughs> this thing is subject to certain things. If the heat is too much, or if the weather changes, and all those things can affect some of these things. And uh, with what I know of INEC, I think they, they invested so much into trainings. Uh, their staffs are no longer those staffs that we used to have. They are, they are more empowered than they used to be. And uh, the use of our doc staff, I don't, know, I don't know how long we will continue like that. And I think uh, our elections are, are becoming costlier and costlier. Uh, if, if the only solution we have are those solutions that will increase costs, I think we are not thinking well or deeper yet uh, because uh, with the deployment of technology, I think by now we should be reducing our dog staff, reliance on our dog staff. Uh, the, 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 the deployment of uh, youth coppers, like you said, uh, is, 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 is an emergency, is an ad hoc thing. And they, are, they were also trained. The youth coppers were trained. And uh, all the staff responsible for their deployment, their movement, they were there. Something must have happened. And I expect somebody to be <coughs> held responsible and to be sanctioned. Because it is not the first time such a thing will happen. It has happened. It has now happened again. By 8.30 a.m. this morning, you are just moving over 100 youth coppers to their primary place of assignment. Somebody must must be sanctioned for that. Somebody has failed somewhere. And I think it also has to do with the, with the, with the, with the generation of, uh, of staff that INEC has. <laughs> I think by now, INEC, the, the, there is need to review the, 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 the staffing, especially at the top level, where the thinking, the actual thinking takes place. Uh, people who are, who, are be, who are very old, who, who, even though they are yet to retirement age, but I expect people at that level now not to be not to be older than 50, 40, or 30, between 30 and 45, so that they can think in a sharp and fast manner and 
deploy the, 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 the latest knowledge about election and what goes on, not about uh, uh, this is civil service, this is how we have been doing it. No, 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 no. It's not like things have moved further than that in other climes. And I think it, it is embarrassing. He mentioned the head of a, the electoral system yes. in the UK who's been there for 25 years. Yes, it is possible. It is possible to be there for 25 years. You cannot equate UK to Nigeria. The, the, the leadership of, of INEC is, is, is rotated, I mean, is, is, is appointed for, for a tenure here in Nigeria. But I, then, what, I'm, what I, I mentioned that, but to add this other part, yes. but he used one word, yes. documentation. Yes. Jega ran the 2011 elections and yes. the 2015 elections. Yes. But documentation. We this have documentation. There are documentations. In fact, Jega built a huge library of documents for INEC and the new ma oh, and they, are, they also have a training institute they have an institute they have tried to institutionalize all these things but the man cannot do more than his tenure it is expected that the new person will take it up from there and improve upon what he has met on ground but does it look like he did i, I think i think i think there are still some issues i i, I cannot really say he, he has done that now <laughs> uh, you cannot equate him to jega in any way no. it, i mean we are, we are talking of uh, of another realm of, of thinking <laughs> okay but same with that election in yes. anambra um Sheung told us about an old man that was arrested yes. trying to share money yes. this is not the first time we've heard yes. of um, people coming to pulling units mm -hmm. to dole out yes. <laughs> to dole out cash but this is the first time we're hearing that an old man he's really younger people and all of that so what do you how, what do you take of this? I don't think it doesn't really matter if he's an old man, really. Whether old or young, I mean, since it won't be done. Be, prior to this election, I, I was reading on, on, on social media. I mean, you had things like branded bags of rice. I mean, why would you? I mean, it's sad. You know, like I said earlier, everything starts and stops and ends with leadership. Because, I mean, if you, we were talking about logistics and all that. You know, we have come to this culture of excellence. You know, we take things in Nigeria like, you know, okay, yes, this is how we've been doing things, or we can't do more than this, this is, I mean, we're trying our best. No, it's not good enough. The enemy of, I mean, uh, the best it's, the best. It's, it's good. It's not good enough. I mean, why would you want to mortgage your future for a bag of rice? Because I was just thinking, you said everything starts and ends with leadership. Not leaders, leadership. Yes, with leadership. What about the followers? What about the people? Exactly. I, I, I'm at a polling unit and you're coming with a bag of rice or yes, money to excuse me. I can explain that. You know why? Because, I mean, the, 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 citizenry of this, I mean, the citizens of this country, we have come to a place where, I mean, the leaders know this. They try to keep the citizens to... Impoverished. I mean, you know, exactly. Impoverished. It's, it's, I mean, for me, I mean, my opinion, what is, I think is deliberate. Because when you don't educate them, like he said, you don't train them, and then they're hungry. They sell their birthright, they sell their, their future for anything you can give. And you can imagine this man sharing money on, on, on the, at the police stations. Okay, let, let's just go on this uh, quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about that and how inducement, you know, if you induce and get induced and choose the wrong person, well, you, you have for to... for the next four years. Okay, we'll, we'll come back after this break. <laughs> 